Hello everyone, Luke here and welcome back to the channel. So, I'm not exactly sure what happened to the last video, but it was made apparent in the YouTube comments, so I decided to remake it. So, today's video is on power resistors, and I think that we should take a look at one. <laughs> wow. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of a closer look of the core, so you can see what it kind of looks like. So that was pretty cool. So, the specific power resistor that I saw online was 35 ohms to 10 watts. Bear in mind this is aluminium housed, so it helps dissipate the heat easier. But this cost £11.53 per resistor. So I decided to build one myself. So there's three main components that you're going to need with this. And the main component you're going to need is cancel resistive wire. Secondly, what you're going to need is some sort of core. As long as it's not conductive, it should work. But what I'm using is a ferrite, uh, ferrite rod, and I'm using that as the core. And that should work perfectly. And last but not least, I'm using Plaster of Paris uh, as the casing. Usually this is made of ceramic or cement, but this will do just fine because I've got this lying about. So let's get into it. Okay, and welcome back. So, the first part of this build, you're going to need to cut a length of canthal wire. And what I've done here is I've cut this at 36 ohms, just because I know that I'm going to lose a little bit of resistance during this build and I want to get it as close to 35 ohms as I possibly can. So let's give this a little test. I've got some patch cables here. Just to measure the resistance. And there we go, that's about 36 ohms. Oh, when it wants to oh it's because it's touching here. And there we go, 36 ohms perfectly. That's awesome. So, the next part that you're going to have to do, once you cut your length of wire at the perfect resistance that you wanted, is you're going to have to take your core, which is my ferrite core, I've just insulated this a little bit, and you want to wrap this around as tightly as you possibly can, leaving a little bit at the end either side. There's one thing that I'm going to mention, is that when you're wrapping the wire around the core, you do not want to let these wraparounds touch each other. That's going to bridge the connection, it's going to ruin your resistor from the beginning. So, just be aware and be a little bit careful. Try and get it started right at the end. I'm going to start wrapping it around. This bit could be a little bit fiddly, but it's easy enough once you start getting it going. So as close as you possibly can without it touching. And what I'm going to do is probably going to skip this part and I'll come back once I've done. So I'll see you guys in a second. And welcome back. So I ended up doing a bit of a dumb move and what I thought was a ferrite core, well a ferrite rod that I was using for the core, it actually wasn't. It was uh, a type of magnet which I didn't quite realise at the time. So I decided to use this instead. What this is, it's Mika, M-I-C-A I'm pretty sure. And this actually turn out really nicely. When you wrap your canthal wire around it, it actually sits into position and you can do it really easily without it touching. So that was the result that I've come up with. I'll let you get a closer look at that. Doesn't that look really awesome? And there we go, that's pretty much about 80% to completion. So the last part 
of this entire resistor that we have to do is to actually give it some casing. So what I'm using here is PET. It's a sheet plastic that I can easily roll up and I can shape into whatever I need it to be. So for this case, I'm just going to do it a little bit easy. I'm just going to roll it up quite thin. And I'm just going to take that into place. Just like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom, just so no plastic can leak out. Like so. Just so that it doesn't leak through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of a hole at the bottom so I can poke the wire out of. Just like so, right in the middle. What I'm going to have to do is try and line that up. There we go. I got it. And then what we're going to have to do is we're just going to have to line that up in the middle. Like so. There we go, you can bend this round now. You don't have to worry about that too much. So now that you've got your mould sorted and your resistor is in your mould, what you need to do next is, for me, is going to be plaster of Paris. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to tip a little bit into this pot that I've got here. Oh, whoops. And a good trick to use when you're using this, when you're using plaster, if you don't know what type of consistency that you want it to be, or if you're not 100% sure, the best bet is to always make sure that it's almost the consistency of yoghurt. So a little bit on the thick side, but not too thick, if that makes sense. There we go. I'm just going to put a little bit extra in, just to make sure that I've got enough. Without spinning it absolutely everywhere. And we'll give that a go. So you just want to add little bits of water in at a time, just a, like a couple drops, give it a mix. That's obviously not enough. Just turn it into like a dough. A couple more drops, give that a mix. See, that's too thick, just a little bit. So I'm gonna, going to have to add a little bit more. and start to fill up our case. Like so. And you just want to give that a pat. Then you want to leave that to set. So once this is done, I'll come back and I'm going to crimp these two little things onto the end so you have a much better contact for when you want to use it. And that will be the finished product. So I'll see you in a second. Ooh. And there we have it. That is the power resistor completely completed. <laughs> and that didn't take very long at all. It was a pretty easy process actually. And I'm really happy of how the result actually turned out. So just for one more final test, we'll connect it back up to the multimeter and see if adding these uh, crimped ends has added any resistance onto it. So, add them. 35.1 ohms. Perfect, absolutely perfect. I am so happy with that. Absolutely awesome. Well, I hope you found that interesting, and if you have any questions about this, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments, and I'll try to respond to everyone. But anyway, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you later.